This is Rahmatullah Tahir from Amit University, formerly Director, Center for Development of Communication Skills. Today we are going to discuss about importance of English communication, the international language. See, I believe that all the languages are beautiful because all the languages are divine. People say that my language is beautiful, others' language is not. Mother's language is beautiful and other's language is not. I do not believe in that. I would say the, all the languages are beautiful because it's all divine languages only. After all, it's all the verbal articulations, articulations of words, sounds only. There is a saying, actually the saying is there in Urdu, there is a saying that, Husn apna nazar aya to kya aya nazar, jo ghair ka husn dekhe wo nazar paida kar means, if you have seen beauty in you, what sort of beauty have you seen? Have a sight to see the beauty in others. So I would say that all the languages are beautiful. But about English, it is something different. There's a thing that your English is an integral part of your personality. Your character and your real self, you can't run away from English at all. See, to live well in this world, we have to be successful and to be successful, we have to have good contact with the peop people and good contact with the people of the world. And to have good contact with the people of the world, we will have to have the language of the world, what the language of the world is spoken by. To live well in this world, we have to be successful and to be successful, we have to have good contact with the people of the world and to have good contact with the people of the world I believe I see that people of the world only not only Chennai not only Tamil Nadu are the place to be successful in this world we will have to have good communication uh, with the language with the what the world speaks I mean the international language we should know okay and if you want to do a business or if you want to get a job or if you want to display or reveal your arts, especially in other countries or if you want to take your arts to the other countries, to other parts of the world, you have to speak international language. Now, I would say that uh, beyond the confines, if you, if you cross the confines, if you go beyond the confines and limits and boundaries of Chennai or Tamil Nadu, you will understand how important English communication is. Here I would say that we are all citizens of the world. A great philosopher, a reformer says that, I am not an Athenian, I am not a Greek, I am a citizen of the world. This was told by Socrates. I am not an Athenian, I am not a Greek, I am a citizen of the world. So we should understand that we are all citizens of the world. Now, language communication, this is the language, English is the language which can establish international integrity, solidarity and brotherhood. Now, I would quote one thing, another great philosopher, his name was Pascal, he says that, Languages built bridges between cultures. I would reiterate on that once again. Languages build bridges between cultures. So I would say that English is a language which can bridge the gap, which can uh, have intimacy, which can bring people close and together, which can build intimacy uh, with the people of the world and which can connect the people the northern culture and the southern culture can be linked 
and the western culture and the eastern culture can be linked. Here I one more thing I would say the most important thing the information is what we get from the international network that is internet. We find that 80 percent of the content of internet is in English only. Now, the most dominant and the predominant language of the world is English. See a big list you would find how predominant and how dominant English language is. See for international relations, international diplomacy, international banking, international studies and international marketing, globalization, globalization, tourism, science, aviation, engineering, architecture, oh sorry, engineering, architecture, advanced medical science, films and the best music of the world is in English only. So, English has become inevitable and indispensable for us. Now, to my beloved students, I would say one thing that now we you are in the formative stages of life or I would say you are in the preparatory stage of life. And once you pass this stage, you will have to face the realities and challenges and competitions of the world and you will have to see the test of life. The test of life will not be like the test of schools, colleges or universities. It will be a tough test and you should understand one thing that test of fire only makes the finest steel. You should believe that, you should understand that the test of fire only makes the finest steel and no pressure, no diamond. No, not only for interviews you need English communication. After the interview also to maintain your job, the job that you got, to maintain that also you need English communication skills because you will have to have good and better interpersonal relationship with the people of the world. Now, let us have a retrospection and self analysis. We find that there are many students who have reluctance and apprehension and even fright means fear concerning English communication. Why should they have English, uh, why should they have uh, this much fear, or fright or dread? See, here we find that there are students who miss their opportunities also, they get opportunities in MNCs and many a times we find that they face rejections and eliminations. They are eliminated, they are rejected many a times just because of not knowing English. Here I would say sometimes they are disdained, here I am very much particular about disdaining, nobody has any right to disdain anyone. Nobody has any right to disdain anyone because nobody is inferior, nor nobody is superior. Neither there should be inferiority complex, no there should be superiority complex, there is there should always be moderation, moderation is always better. And then they think about the failure, we fail many people fail in this world, many great people of the world failed, and they came from rags to riches. Here we find about the failure what I would like to say is failure is just the gateway to success. These are the stepping stone towards success and there are many students who are afraid of English communication, they are afraid to speak in English. I would say to those students that uh, there is a saying in once again in Hindi, Dar ki aage jeet hai means beyond fear there is victory you will have to subdue your fear. Then comes pressure, no pressure, no diamond, no pain, no gain. With the time and pressure only God Almighty makes diamond, we should understand that. Here one thing, there are many students who are very, uh, who have profound knowledge, deep knowledge and they have great wisdom skills and talents and abilities also, but just because of not knowing English, their talents, their wisdom, their skills and knowledge remain concealed and sealed and there in the interview chamber, they stay like caged lion. 
See another problem what we find with the students is procrastination. I mean evading the students evade they say that uh, when the examination comes we will see when the interview comes then we will see. They evade things they procrastinate they postpone things they postpone their learning also and even they postpone their training also when they get an opportunity to learn English they postpone that they evade it. What happens is that they become embarrassed and perplexed in congresses, conferences, and meetings and gatherings. Of course, they have the dream to work abroad, they have the dream to do business abroad, but just because of not knowing English, they are stuck. Now, what happens just because of the latches and lapses of the students, their parents also suffer, the parents also. Uh, become distressed, dejected and disappointed just because of the irresponsibility of the children. Now, I would say that the solution is you will have to take a firm and steadfast decision, unflinching determination to learn to communicate in right and impeccable English and stop lamenting and grieving. And you will have to strive and stride towards your mission and vision. How? With an optimistic, positive and winning attitude. I believe that you are born to win. And winners never quit and quitters never win. Now, there is a question many people ask me that how to learn English communication skills. How to have better language how to have proficiency in English communication. In short, I would say LSRW, listening, speaking, reading, writing. Here, uh, one of the question is that grammar, is grammar important or not? I would say uh, quite simple, other is a good that you may find that English grammar is bitter. Many people say that English grammar is bitter, means not interesting. About that, there is another saying English grammar could be bitter, but for better English, you need bitter grammar. Once again, I would say that English grammar could be bitter, but for better English, you need bitter grammar. What do you find bitter? It is needed. Without that, you cannot speak good English. Here, how to learn grammar? There are different ways. One is functional grammar, if you read books or if you listen to people, there already set grammar would be there, by means of that also you can learn. And the other one, you will have to go for contemporary English grammar. See the most important aspects of grammar, I will tell you. The first one comes in the parts of speech, in parts of speech comes noun, verbs, adjectives, adverbs prepositions, pronouns, conjunctions and interjections. What is noun? Noun is a naming word. It can be the name of person, place, animal or thing. There could be so many lakhs of words, lakhs of nouns could be there in the English. Then comes verbs, all the action words, all the doing verbs, all the doing words come under verbs. Then comes adjectives, the words which are used to qualify or describe a person, pers uh, animal or thing. Then comes adverbs, the words which are used to describe the actions of people or actions of any action that come under adverbs. Then comes preposition, the, these are the words which are positioned before a noun or a pronoun to show the relation between a noun and other parts of the sentences. Then comes pronouns, the words which are used instead of nouns, they are called pronouns. Then comes conjunctions, the words which are used to link or join one word with another word or one sentence with another sentence, they are called conjunctions. Then there comes interjections, interjections these are the words which are used to sh uh, sh show your certain feelings. For example, you may say that wow such a nice car, such a nice person, you see. 
three broadly speaking there are three kinds of tenses first one that is past one past tense then comes present tense then comes future tense these have been divided past tense has been divided into four four kinds are there this also of four types this is also of four types the past tense that is divided into simple past past perfect past continuous and past perfect continuous the similarly the present tense also has been divided into simple present present perfect present continuous and present perfect continuous and future tense also has been divided into four simple future future perfect future continuous and future perfect continuous but the last one the future perfect continuous tense is not commonly used in the modern english so what do we do for that for that instead of using uh, future perfect continuous tense we use future continuous tense now we'll discuss about the past tenses I find that there are many students who do not know the tenses just because of not knowing the right and they speak wrongly and they cut sorry figure. The simple past is used for those actions which have already taken place means for those action which have got completed. I can tell you this way the past actions for the past actions also we can use simple past and past habits also for example i saw a movie it could be any time in the past it could be near past or remote past any time in the past it could be and we use this for past habits also for example she always carry an umbrella with her that's a habit okay he liked that phone very much he liked that mobile very much he liked that car very much to show your past habits also we use simple past tense i just to show you an example how would it be this can be used all the tenses can be used in four ways in positive manner a negative manner interrogative manner and negative interrogative manner for example if you speak in, in a positive way i'll tell you he broke the glass he broke the glass is an example of positive speech okay if you want to make a negative he didn't break the glass he didn't or did not okay it can be made a question also is yes, interrogative speech the question should be in this way did he break the glass did he break the glass question then there comes another one negative interrogative speech also didn't he break then he break the glass this way all the tenses you will have to speak in four ways four different ways all the tenses should be spoken or should be practiced in four different ways for example the as i told you that positive speech negative speech and negative speech and negative interrogative speech so all those 12 tenses out of these 12 tenses 
As I told you before, we use 11 tenses only in modern English. The, the twelfth one is not used in the, the modern English. So, then there would be 11 tenses we have to use extensively. So, all this 11 into 4 comes 44 in 44 ways you should be able to use the tenses. And so, let us go for the other tense. Past, how to speak in past perfect tense, how to speak in past perfect tense. First of all, I would say how to use it. Here, may, there are many students who do not know the difference between simple past and the past perfect. Simple past, as I told you, that these are used for two purposes. One, for the past events, the action that could be that must have taken place any time in the past. Or the other one is past habits. For those, we use simple past. But past perfect tense is something different. The past perfect is used only when two actions are happening. And in that, whichever action take place first, for that we use past perfect tense. For example, I will tell you here this way. The two people A and B. A says, See, B asks A to come at 5 a.m. But B comes at 5.30 a.m. See, the question is B comes half an hour late. Having come half an hour late, B says this way. There is another way sometimes people use The first one he said that when I came to your house you went out. The other sentence I came to your house when you went out. Both are absolutely wrong. Many students do write like this just because of not knowing how to use past perfect tense. Here I would say what you should do is both are absolutely wrong. What you should do is when I came to when I came to your house, house, you had already gone out. You should say this way only. When I came to your house, you had already gone out. This is past perfect tense. This had and the third form this proves that this shows the time limit, the time duration also. Here what happens when I came to your house, you went out, it says that as if seeing A, he went out without caring and in this tense, I came to your house when you went out here also, it says that as if both happened at the same time, it is not showing the time gap at all here, we find that half an hour gap is there. This should be proved in 
the past perfect tense. Okay. Hope you have understood this one. Now, how to make it? I will tell you how to use it. Let us see a structure how to use it. Subject the doer, then comes had, then you should go for the third form of the verb. For example, he had done. This is the third form done his work. He had done his work before his friend before his friend came to his house. house. I just want to say that if somebody does not know English grammar, he can learn it, it can be learned, it is not so difficult thing. So, English grammar is an inevitable one, it is indispensable one, we cannot run away from English, we cannot run away from English grammar. Wish you have understood whatever I taught. Thank you so much.